system is now Mac OS. Now, of course, each version of Mac OS does have a special name after a place that's especially important to us here in California. And this year's Mac OS is no different. But the choice this time was obvious. Our latest, newest OS X is Mac OS Sierra. Now, Sierra is a fantastic new release with a big focus on continuity, the iCloud, and the fundamentals of the Mac experience. I wanna start with continuity, because continuity is like magic. Your devices are able to sense themselves around you and use secure peer-to-peer -peer wireless protocols to enable you to move from one task to another across your devices just seamlessly. Well, we wanted to take on this year one task that we all do many times a day, every time we start using our Macs. And that feature is called Auto Unlock. So, today, when you first approach your Mac to use it, the experience is something like this. You open it up, you're confronted with a password field, and then you type, and then maybe mistype, and then retype your password, and then you're in and using your Mac. But you know, for many of us, we already have a device securely authenticated to our wrists that already knows who we are and could tell our Mac. And so then, when we opened our Mac, it could be a little bit more like this. And we're in. It's that simple. And we made this really secure using time of flight networking to make sure it's you who's that close to the machine who's unlocking it. So it's really great. Now, the next continuity feature in Mac OS Sierra is universal clipboard. Now, wow, gasp. So, but I know co copy and paste is so fundamental to the way that we use our Macs for so many years now. But what if when you were on even your iPhone and you found some text and you just went to copy it, that when you then went to your Mac, well, you could just paste it right in. And now you can with images, video, everything, it's completely automatic. Now I'd like to move on to iCloud, and specifically iCloud Drive. Now today with iCloud Drive, you can put documents into your iCloud Drive that you explicitly want to make available to you across your other systems, as well as your iOS devices. And customers have done quite a bit of this. There are actually 10 billion customer documents in iCloud Drive today but we want to take this a step further. We want all of your documents and your desktop accessible to you everywhere, so that when you're on one Mac, maybe you're putting things in your normal documents folder, well, of course, those should be available to you on your other Macs. But you know, for 30 years now, we've all learned to do the work, the things that we're working on right now, but where do we put those? So often it's on our desktop. So let's make our desktop available on our other Macs as well, and have those files be available to us on the go on our iPhones. Now you can. Next up, optimize storage. You know, we love using our Macs and we fill them with so much stuff, but you can end up with a situation like this. And, uh, you know, what do you do about it? Well, it turns out we're going to give you a solution, and it works in two ways. First, it helps you make room for the files that your new files by keeping your older ones up in the cloud. So whether it's your full resolution photos when your others are in iCloud Drive or movies that you've already watched in iTunes or even those old mail attachments, we can clear off that space locally and make those things available to you on demand. But we also wanna make it easy for you to get rid of files you'll never use again automatically. Things like your Safari web cache and maybe the trash that you keep forgetting to empty and redundant data that's stored by mail. Well, we can get rid of all of that as well. And we provide a really simple user interface to help you do it. Now, as a test, we took a system that was nearly full. It had about, let's say, 20 gigs free, and we put it through the paces. Now, it had a lot of photos and a lot of documents. It had movies that were already watched, mail with lots of attachment, apps, system files, and so forth. And we turned on all the switches for optimized storage, 
And we went from 20 gigs free to 150 gigs free. So we think this is gonna make a big difference for all of you. Next, Apple Pay. So, we all love using Apple Pay in stores to pay with our phones and our uh, Apple Watch at the cash register and to shop inside apps on our iOS devices. So of course we wanted to bring this experience to the Mac. We thought long and hard about exactly the right way to do it and I think we've nailed it. I think we might have an accessory business with some carrying straps. It could be very helpful. No, this is not how people are going to shop on their Macs, right? We shop online, on the web, in Safari. And so what are we doing? We're bringing Apple Pay to the web. So now, when you're shopping online, you'll have a Pay with Apple Pay button available to you. When you click it, a sheet comes down and actually prompts you to securely authenticate your purchase using continuity right on your iPhone with Touch ID. And of course, this works with your Apple Watch as well, so you can authenticate with just a tap on your wrist. And already, many, many merchants are signed up to bring their web storefronts to support Apple Pay on the web. And Apple Pay is expanding hugely geographically. It's now available in the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, China, and Singapore. And in the next few months, it's coming to Switzerland, France, and Hong Kong. Now, next, I want to move to part of the Mac experience, and that's tabs. You know, many of us love using tabs to take a mess of windows that we have in Safari and get them neatly organized and tab set. Well, now, we want to bring that to all of your multi-windowed apps. So maybe you have multiple windows open in maps. Well, you could organize those in tabs. But because it's built into the system, you could do that for third-party apps as well. In fact, we've implemented it in a way that the apps you already have installed can support this out of the box without any modification. So tabs everywhere. <laughs> so next, picture in picture. We love watching video on the web, but sometimes we like to keep track of a video while we're doing other work. Well, now you can. You can push the picture-in-picture -picture button. Your video goes into a nice little pip. You can move it around the screen, and it works great in full screen as well. So these are seven great features in macOS Sierra, but there is one more. And this year, I'd like to take the unusual step of letting this feature introduce itself. Hi, it's me. It sure is great to be on the Mac. How about a demo? That's right. Siri is coming to the Mac. And it looks like Siri would like to give a demo, so let's get to it. So we have Mac OS Sierra right here. And the first thing you'll notice is right here on the dock, we have access to Siri. So I can ask Siri a question. Let's say, how do you like being on a Mac? Pretty awesome. Lots of space, aluminum unibody walls, and no complaint about the lack of windows. So, <laughs> so it's the same Siri that we know and love, but now on the Mac, it can do so much more. Things like sophisticated queries for files, like show the files I worked on last week about the offsite. Have I ever told you your file in is so styling? So we have my search results, but what's really incredible is I can refine that sophisticated query with a follow-on, like just the ones Ken sent me that I tagged with draft. For your filing pleasure. So you see I have just the files I'm looking for right there. But what's great is this is a useful result that I may want to use throughout the day as I work. So I can actually click on this plus button and pin it right here into my notification center. And this, yeah, it's really great. And this works for lots of your Siri results. So I'm going to actually open this team offsite presentation, uh, just working on a little, little project here. I'll take this one full screen. 
we see we're planning an offsite, and there are a bunch of activities, but while I'm working in full screen, Siri's there for me and helps me multitask. So I can do things like play my power ballads playlist. Oh yeah. So Siri to the rescue with some awesome tunes. I could let this play all day, but I think we'll get on with the demo. So I can actually use my Siri results here to help me complete this presentation. So I have an image result here for slacklining. Let me just click in my Siri result, drag it right into my presentation. And I can also have Siri search the web for me. So let's do uh, search the web for pictures of falconry. Here are some images of falconry I found on the web. Okay, that looks like some good fun. So I can actually take the results right out of Siri and drag them into my document. It's pretty epic. But you know, I'd, I'd like to uh, actually replace this map with one that I've been working on here on my iPad. So my iPad's so great because I can actually use my Apple Pencil to do some drawings. So let's see, I'm gonna take my Apple Pencil here and I'm gonna draw a path. Maybe we'll, we'll take a hike like this, maybe out over here, just like that. Okay, that looks like just the uh, drawing I want. But of course, I'd like to now get it on my Mac. So how do I do that? Well, why don't I just copy it but I'm not just copying it to my iPad because when I return to my Mac, I can paste it just like I would anything else, actually wirelessly transfers it automatically into my document. So now that I look at this trip, I realize that it's a horrible idea. So I can actually use Siri to message uh, my friend, tell Ken, maybe we should just see a movie. Here's your message, ready to send it. You bet. It's sent. So I can use Siri, of course, to do messaging at any time, and it can also help me find that movie. What new movies are playing this Friday? I found eight movies playing on Friday. All right, so Siri's given me some results, and uh, Finding Dory looks pretty good, so let's open that up. Now I can go play the trailer. But I can also drop right here into picture in picture. And you see in picture in picture, I can actually resize if I want. I can reposition the pip window to any corner. And of course, it works great in full screen, right on top of my other content. So this movie looks pretty good. So I think I'll go back into the browser and let's actually buy some tickets. So I see there's a showing here at 7.15, I'll select that. Select the amount, let's go with uh, 10 of us. And here you see a buy with Apple Pay button. So watch what happens when I click buy with Apple Pay. I'm prompted to confirm here on my iPhone. I just use touch ID with my fingerprint and I can securely authenticate my transaction just like that. And that's a quick look at macOS Sierra. So Sierra, some great features for continuity, the cloud, Apple Pay, user experience, and of course, Siri. And there's much more that you'll be hearing about later today. Now, Sierra is available to you developers in developer preview form today, and we're doing a public beta in July. You can sign up now at beta.apple.com, and it'll be available to everyone else in the fall across all of these systems.